coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem uh with another lesson, uh, uh, exhortation I have with me here. The, uh, the beloved brother Ash, the head of the Tampa camp, as well as the brother Ira Shah, all right, one of the leaders of the Cleveland camp. Okay, and uh, we're coming back through the spirit and power of the Lord. Before we begin this lesson, of course, we want to give all praises, all glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem Kapadash. All right. Also, we want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule and teach well. And also, peace, love, uh, many blessings to the elect. Okay. Uh, as you can see, you know, this is going to be a response to the elder apostle who caused video that he did last night entitled, It's Time to Buckle Down, Brothers. Okay. Or Buckle Down. Salaki. It's Time to Buckle Down. Okay. And uh, just making references to, you know, this being in a sober-minded spirit. A spirit of, um, you know, vision, you know, having clear understanding on what's expected of us in these times, knowing that the evil day is approaching, um, you know, so the different ways and, and you know, uh, characters that we have that are character flaws, we got to clean those up, okay? We got to buckle down in the spirit, okay? When you buckle, when you get in the car, you put your seatbelt on to prepare for any uh, catas catastrophes or any car crashes. All right, so you, you're getting yourself in a prepared mentality, whether there's a car crash or not, okay? Well, you want to be, you want to have your, you want to be buckled in in the spirit right now, man. You want to have your spiritual seat built in, okay, preparing for anything to come against you, okay? And that comes with having a sober mind, because usually people that get behind the wheel and they just, they, they, their um, senses are impaired, you know, they forget to what? Put their seat belt on. And they end up flying out the window. But somebody that's very aware and very attentive and, you know, they adjust their mirrors, they make sure their mirror's good, they make sure, you know, the car warm up, put the seatbelt on, make sure everything is, is perfect before takeoff, those are some of the most uh, successful drivers. And that's why, how we should be likened into the spirit. We should be more in a sober-minded, having gravity, you know, understanding, you know, the, uh, running with certainty, not running with uncertainty. Okay, we're supposed to know and, 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 and truly believe that this calling is going to lead to a greater thing, and it comes with being sober-minded. So. That's why they, they, there's a saying in the world, they say, it's better to just stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You know, as simple as that. So you stay ready you in the, that mindset all the time. So when something does happen, you don't, you don't need to scramble. Well, what do I do? Well, yeah. you, know, you should know what to do. You know? mm -hmm. right. But I got something. Yep. Uh, I'll start at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, but I'll start at verse 1. It says, For, furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Yahweh's side, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please the Most High, so ye would abound more and more. So, you know, the, the, the apostles, they have laid out how you're supposed to walk, man, because they have been inspired by, through the Heavenly Father, man, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh's side. And the Holy Spirit has already showed them the past. So now we just need to understand and, and comprehend what's been laid out before us and, and, and apply it. So it's easy to scream scriptures at people and, and call the white man the devil, but what are you doing in your everyday walk? Are you walking, are you living this word, okay? Mm -hmm. Verse two says, for you know that, so like what commandments we gave you by the Lord Yahweh Shai, for this is the will of the Most High, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of, con Cupiscence, mm -hmm. even as the Gentiles which know not the Most High. Right, so let me get that word there. Uh, concupiscence, like it. Uh, because you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to be led after your uh, your your, car, your carnal lust. Because that have that'll derail you, man. And you see what it does happen to a train when it's derailed. Um, that was verse five. Let me just get the word there real quick. All right, the word there for concupiscence. Mia G1939 says desire, craving, longing, desire for what is forbidden, lust. Mm -hmm. yeah, yep. so, so you go ahead and oh, you got it. So you don't want to be walking after these things, man. And it is so to be sanctified, all right, to be separated, you have to separate yourself from this world. You have to yeah. say, hey, you gotta put this word and the brotherhood before your wants and, and, and your lust. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because you what we're separate. We have, we're not walking in, in the flesh. Right. supposed to be walking after the spirit. After the spirit, that's right. And I got a quick scripture 
um, to land back off the brother Ash's point, this is uh, Ephesians 5 and 14. It says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest. Yeah, because you know what? We will sleep at one point in time, meaning we were ignorant to the things that were coming on the earth. We were ignorant to the fact of who our enemies were. We were ignorant to the fact of the fate of America. We were ignorant to the fact of us being Hebrew Israelites and behind enemy lines. So we would sleep. And that's the worst thing you can be is sleep behind enemy lines. We was going into that at camp yesterday. Right. Right. You know, when you're behind enemy lines, man, you're not supposed to be comfortable or, or at rest. You're supposed to be trying to figure out how to get from behind those lines. Yeah. And the way for us to get out of that that mentality is to awake. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. That's it. And real quick, and that's when you awake, you understand the objective. So, like, yeah. if you're behind enemy lines, you're not doing what you want. You're doing what's best for the the, 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 the truth, so to say. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're not just doing, being all willy-nilly. Because once you're awake, you understand what you've been awakened to. Or you're supposed to anyway. Yep. You know? And now it's not about you or what you <laughs> want to do. It's about what's going to uh, prosper the, the, the one that sent us. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. It says, and arise from the dead, and Hamashiach shall give thee light. Because pursuant to um, Ephesians 2 and 5, we were dead to sin. We were dead. Matter of fact, let me get it real quick, the land back. When it says arise from the dead, I mean the dead state of mind. This is uh, Ephesians 2 and 5. It says, even when you were dead in sins, have quickened us together with a mashiach. By grace you are saved. So when it says arise from the dead, it's talking about we were, we were being uh, dead in sins. But when we woke up to the spirit of the Lord, our sins were covered by the blood of Yahushua. Continuing on, verse 15, it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Okay? And we're in evil times, man. As you can see right now, man, the food, man, food is, is jacked up, man. Mm -hmm. These grocery stores ain't looking too good, man. Okay? And it's just the beginning of this shortage. Even the president warned us of a food shortage. So therefore, you know it must be real. Not to mention inflation, okay? The market is being oversaturated with the, with the U.S. dollar, okay? The, uh, oil, it, it, yeah. there are so many different things that's happening right now that's leading to a, a, a breadcrumb trail of destruction, okay? The Hansel and Gretel, you follow the breadcrumbs, you're gonna, lead, you're gonna be led right to the destruction. And that's where America's at. Okay, destruction. So the scriptures say the days are evil, so we have to buy back that time that we lost being dead in sin. Yeah. And how do we do that? By seeking the Lord, by walking sober. All right? Meaning a sober mind, having a clear mind, a clear conscience on what's expected of you in these times. Okay? Not getting caught up in the affairs of this world and, and you know, being pulled to and fro, okay, away from the true mission. Because at the end of the day, man, we don't need Yahweh Bashimah Shah to help us. So we gotta be awoke, we gotta stand on our feet like the scriptures say, okay? That's a form of being woke, because nobody sleeps standing up, okay? But you, when you're awoke, you standing up. That's why the scriptures say, and great fear, fear fell upon them when they stood upon their feet. That's going into when we woke up to the truth. So now that we woke up to the truth and we stood up, okay? Now we're supposed to walk, not staggering, but we're supposed to walk as if we have a clear mind and we woke and we, we have direction. Okay? Let's and being, mm -hmm. uh, let's go into the etymology of the word circumspect, it goes into being cautious, wary, looking about, you know. So yep. you're supposed to be examining everything, man, making sure you, you're on your correct path, okay, and in your daily walk, man. Uh, real quick, uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, you mentioned the word examine. It says examine yourselves. So that's the main thing you got to look within. You know, uh, it says, examine yourselves, rather you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not in your own selves, how that your house shall my shot is in you, except ye be reprobates. So that's what's commanded of us. We got to look within. You see what I'm saying? We got this light, this understanding, okay? If, if before you go and, like, point your finger at someone else, you got to get the beam, like the scriptures say, and mold out your own outline, okay? So you got to examine yourself, rather you be in the faith. Are you... On the right walk, so to speak, man. All right, and I just land back in mm -hmm. on the Ashra, man. Yep, I got one more scripture on that. This is uh, Ephesians 5 and 16. All right, it says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, yeah. 
And what is the will of the Lord? The scriptures say, my determination is to gather the nations and pour out my indignation upon them. Okay? So we understand that the will of the Lord is, 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 entails evil, destruction, fire, nuclear missiles. Then we're supposed to know how to walk to, so that we can escape these things, man. Okay? Because we have to understand the total picture. All right? Not just a part. Okay? We have to have the full spectrum of what's expected of us as we're moving in Babylon the Great. Okay? This is very important, which is why the Spirit had the Apostle do that very heavy lesson last night on buckling down. And it was true. Everything he was saying, him and the brothers of Aina and Tazamak, hey, everything they were saying was on point, man. Okay? That mentality is, 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 is necessary, man, to get you into the kingdom of heaven. So, hey, you, know, you brothers out. To back you up, like you used the example about buckling up in the car. Hey, look, brace for impact, man. Mm -hmm. Tri times of tribulation are coming. To, uh, persecution is coming, so you need to be buckled down. If not, you're going to go flying out that windshield, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you fall out of the truth. But uh, real quick, did you read uh, 15, 16, and 17, right? Ephesians yeah, 5? yeah. Let me read in the NLT real quick. All right, come on. This come. is uh, Ephesians 5 and 15. It says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. And what? What opportunities are we talking about? Is it talking about coming up, getting getting the bag? No, it's talking about the opportunities to grow in the spirit, the power of your heart. That's right. right. Being a better. Look, you can't. How you, you can't te tell people to be better if you're not yourself trying to be better. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse 17 says, "Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do." And with the, what the Lord wants you to do is right here in these scriptures, man. Mm -hmm. It's not, it ain't, you ain't got to do mathematical equations with algebra, X, Y, Z, and all that to figure this out. Right. The Lord told you plain as day, you know, what the, what you need to do, man. Mm -hmm. And y'all mentioned, uh, as we behind enemy lines, you know, we got to know, we got to know uh, what's this devil's about to get ready to try to come down with, man. Having great wrath, man. All right, so I got this quick scripture, this Second Timothy 2, I'm going to start at 3. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Mashiach. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of his life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So the main thing is about trying to please Yahweh Shemash. And like like Yahweh Shah said himself, you know, he said, Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. That's the main focus, the main goal, the main objective, so to speak. All right, that's doing the work, doing the will of Yahweh Shemash. So mm -hmm. that we we can not only uh, deliver ourselves, but those that hate us, man. Yep. Okay. And that's real. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's, you know what I'm saying, what I want to bring out to the scripture. Right? Yeah, real quick, uh, 2 Peter 3, and, um, well, you know what? Let me start at 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, which some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, because the Lord is a father of mercy. Uh, the scriptures say uh, we believe in the saving of the souls. Okay, the Lord believes that the scriptures say uh, um, it, is, it is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom of heaven. Huh. Okay, the Lord loves to reward uh, people according to their works, whether it's good or evil. So if you have good works, the Lord's intentions towards you is to reward uh, is to reward you. Okay, but there is a there is a level of conduct that must be maintained. There is a level of order. There is a level of, of, of respect fear that the Lord is requiring so that he can reward you, okay? It says, verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night into which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Here's the point. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, all right? Meaning being buckled down in the spirit. Think to yourself, like, how should I be acting knowing that everything that I see around me is going to be burnt up in my lifetime? Right. You know, certain people that I know is going to be burnt up. Certain people that I've had love for is going to die. So what the hell type of person should I be? What type of spirit should I be moving in, man? All right? This is all a part of being uh, buckling down being spiritually strapped in, girded with this word of truth. The scriptures say, have thy feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You know, it, it comes a point in the truth, you know, certain things that should be known don't have, shouldn't have to be reiterated. 
You know, you shouldn't have to be told to come to camp. That's expected of you. All right, you shouldn't have to be told to do your videos and fellowship and pray and read and study and, and you know, be charitable. These are the things that are expected of you, okay? So we have to put ourselves in a mentality of being obedient and that obedience is what makes us be buckled down and sober-minded in the spirit because we're being obedient, okay? It says, looking for, verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with further heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness dwell, okay? And if we look for a new heaven and a new earth, don't you think we should conduct ourselves in the spirit of that new heaven and new earth that we're looking for? Before we inherit it, we should be already putting ourselves in that mentality. Okay? You're not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven and then try to put on the mentality. So be the change you want to see. <laughs> be the change you want to see. Perfect. Okay? You want to see the world in a certain in a certain light. Well, you be the light so that the world can then be transformed into that light, man. Okay? You have to, hey, we, we're making a change in the world right now. Be one of, be one that makes a righteous change in the world. But you, that means that you got to be what? You got to be sober. You got to buckle down. Okay? You got to take it more serious. The Lord is going to require more from us as we get closer to the end. There's going to be a lot of things that's going to be required at the, at the hand of the prophets. You're going to have to be around more. You're going to have to sacrifice time. You're going to have to sacrifice sleep. You know, hey man, the Lord's going to be, you know, expecting us to really take on the brunt of this ministry because we're on the forefront. Mm -hmm. So if you've got other things that, that can possibly prohibit you from, from, you know, being effective in your ministry, hey, the Lord is going to, you know, going to check you, you know, because things are about to get tight out here, man. Mm -hmm. It's about to get very tight. Food scarces, food shortages is coming. There's going to be an economic collapse. Brothers are going to lose their jobs, okay? There's going to be, hey, man, it's going to be limited resources. And people are going to be trying to kill us, bro. People are going to see us on the news. Yeah. Y'all must, uh, Jay, you think this is, I'm, there's Jakes out there, the end is truth, that don't really know, understand what you got yourself into. Mm -hmm. I don't understand, you, you don't know, some Jakes, I ain't going to say all day, but you, you don't read that the, the, the son of man was hated, that they're going to hate us too? The Lord said that if they hate you, know that's the word to comfort you, right? Know that they have hated me first. Yep. You know, Jake don't really understand what's about to come. The servant is not greater than his master. Yep. That's right. Got something real quick. This is Mark 13, and I'll start verse 34. It says, For the Son of Man is a man tra taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So like the elders been going into, man, you, you need to be watching, man. You can't, what can you do when you're asleep? Somebody, anybody can just run up on you, you know, because <laughs> you're sleeping. You're not, you're not using your senses to be aware of your surroundings. And not only do you have to watch the prophecies, you need to watch what's going on around you, period. You need to watch your families. You need to watch what you're doing, what positions you put yourself into, you know, watch, uh, uh, you know, as leaders, we got to watch the, the, the flock, you know, this isn't just about you. This is a body, so we have to watch for one another. You know, just because you're the last brother to come in the camp, don't mean you don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you're supposed to watch brothers too. You know, because then you might see something that they, he, that brother don't see. Right. Yeah, we, hey, we your brother's keeper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't going to see. No, nah, man. You know, we ain't, we ain't very, hey, it's time precious. The time is precious. Okay? Like uh, Elder Ariella had posted something uh, where it said, um, uh, the uh, time is, is, is God's currency or something like that. Mm -hmm. And man, when you think about it, man, time is very valuable. That's why the scriptures tell us to redeem the time. Mm -hmm. We got to buy back the time that was lost. So you have to value it. You have to understand like, yo, this is literally liberty. Mm -hmm. You know, this, when you read Revelation, the seventh chapter, the angels is literally holding back the destruction so that the elect can be sealed. Mm -hmm. You know how precious this time is? Mm -hmm. The scriptures say that vengeance burns in the Lord's heart every day. But for the sake of the elect, the angels are stopping the destruction from happening. Yeah, there's 
like they say, oh, well, I'll use the money example. Oh, that's a waste of money. Or that was money well spent. Well, guess what? The things of this world is a waste of time. But this is time well spent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You see that's that? the commodity. Yeah. Just, you know? So now, let's say, for instance, you know, uh, uh, your, your, the due date for a project is, you know, two weeks away. All right? And let's say you take advantage of those two weeks. And then the, the guy, the project manager, come and say, well, you know what? I'm going to give you another three days just to spice it up. And then, you, you know, you take advantage of those three days. It's going to be like, hey, man, that was time. You, you, you did that, man. I can tell you invested a lot of your time into making sure that this project was fulfilled. So it's going to impress the actual project manager that you took advantage of that time. Okay? It shows that how one values his time, man. So imagine if you're taking this liberty and your house shot to F around and not be fully effective in the ministry. It's going to be like a slap in the face. Like, look, I gave you the time to get it done. I gave you the time to labor. I held back the, the destruction for the sake of the elect. Okay? Literally. The angel scripture say, hurt not the earth nor the sea until my servants have been sealed uh, uh, in their, in their, uh, in their head foreheads. And that's how you multiply the talents that the Lord gave you. by put, You got to put the time in to multiply them. You got to put the time in, man. <laughs> That's how you multiply them talents. Yeah, being buckled down. In Isaiah 55, it said, Ho, come ye to the waters and buy. Yep. You know, how you buy of uh, the Lord with your time that you give to him. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I got some real quick. First Thessalonians 5, verse 4. Um, did you already read uh, chapter 4? Uh, chapter 4, yeah. yeah. Uh, First Thessalonians 5 and 4, it says, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And going back to you mentioning watching and being of a clear mind, um, you made a statement, a beautiful statement. I was sitting thinking about Matthew 6 and 10. It talked about, uh, you said, why not take on the mindset now of the kingdom? And instead of yeah. waiting to the kingdom, take on this mindset, do so now. It, it, it roughly paraphrasing, uh, 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 I got it pulled up actually. Um, Matthew 6 and 10 it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So the same thing that's in heaven is going to be on earth. You know, the order, the righteousness, and so on and so forth. But we got to take on that mindset, you know, uh, now as mm -hmm. we're about to transition into the kingdom. Right. Take, take, put this mindset on willingly. Because mm -hmm. if the kingdom is going to be put on, you ain't going to have a choice mm -hmm. or an option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we got to, we got to, like the brother just read, we have to show the kingdom. How much I said the kingdom of heaven is within you? So we gonna the men of the Lord are gonna show you that mindset before it actually arrives to the, on this earth, mm -hmm. to, where all Israel will be perfect, man. We, we, you know, we strive to be perfect. All right, we following after the footsteps of Yahweh. He left us. All right, he left us examples. The men followed after him. The disciples became apostles, so on and so forth. And then they went on and taught others that th there were people that never even met the Lord. Yep. During that time, that believed on the yep. disciples' words, right? Yep. Same thing now. We didn't. Yeah, how I didn't come and wake up uh, anybody in the physical sense, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now it's the Holy Spirit working through 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 men, okay? And now we have to walk those footsteps, man, yep. because we have to change. We have to become new creatures, man. That's right. That's right. It's a little bit more. It says, uh, first Thessalonians, I'm bring back five and six. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Mm -hmm. Right, that hypnos, in that state of uh, slumber, so to speak. I believe uh, the lesson that we uh, land back in off of the Apostle Kant that he brought up that Romans uh, with the 13 and 11. Yep. All right. It says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. All right. In which the brother brought out the word circumspect, because sober and circumspect are synonymous, man. All right. It says, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that, are, that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on a breastplate of faith. Yeah, we're of the day. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, we're of the day? It, it represents light. Okay? Daytime is, is synonymous with light. We are the children of light. The scriptures say, uh, uh, ye are the light of the world. Therefore, uh, uh, let your light shine before men. Mm -hmm. A city. Uh, 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 the scriptures say, uh, uh, no man lighteth a candle and put it under a table. Okay? So we are the children of day. Esau is the children of the night. Mm -hmm. Night represents darkness and confusion. Okay? Go ahead, bro. That's right. He's the true black. Yeah, he's, he's the, the true black. black. He's the black man. Yeah. Yep. It says, but let us who are of the day be sober, mm -hmm. putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. 
Yeah, that helmet is a, is a protection for uh for your head. Okay, so the hope of salvation, man, that's your protection, man. When you're going through all sorts of manners of afflictions and body pains and you know just everything feel like it's crashing down on you, you still got to maintain your hope. You still got to push forward to the kingdom. Okay, it's just like if you're on the battlefield and and you might have hurt your leg, but you can see your trench is right there. And you know, like, even though bombs is going around you and mud is flying up and popping up on you, your leg hurt, but you still, you have that hope that I can still crawl to my trench mm -hmm. to safety, then that's how we have to be in the spirit. Amen. You ain't just going to lay there and go, oh, yeah. fuck it up. Give up. When you can see <laughs> yeah. that you're close to safety, mm -hmm. yeah. you're going to give give it all you got to make sure you get to that safe point. And, and that's why we have a body, because you might, right before you get close to that trench, a, a brother might pop up and pull you in. And pull you, you in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. Go ahead, bro. Um, it says, it says, uh, Salakia, um, verse 9, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9, for Yahweh hath not appointed us to wrath, mm -hmm. but to obtain salvation by our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach. That's right. So we, we here to obtain salvation by doing what the scriptures say, kiss the son, at least he be angry. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was angry with us, man. So therefore, as it was of, of our mind to go astray, we supposed to be seeking the Lord ten times more uh -huh. by kissing the Son. That when you kiss somebody, that's that's is more of a, 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 a an analogy of, of actually basically you know a, 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 meeting together. When you, yeah, when you kiss somebody, two come together. Or you basically you know like a teacher's pet. Yeah, kiss you know, yeah, you basically you get, like you know like 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 damn like I'm about to. You know, do what I got to do to get on the good, in the good graces of the Lord. That's what the Lord expects from us because why? You know, we, we fell. Mm -hmm. You know, he was angry with us, man. So right now, it's, it's not time to be riotous, you know, all in the spirit of revelings and, you know, celebrations and celebratory moments. It, it, now is the time to be serious, to be doing the work, to make sure that if you're in a position of leadership in the camp, that the camp is flowing and, and, and these brothers is being built up. Making sure that we're studying and we're be, being in the, in, the, in the faith, okay? Prioritizing, man, okay? We don't want to be in the spirit of thinking that, oh, uh, yeah, we are shoo-in for the, for the elect, you know? Mm -hmm. And now we have to literally give diligence to make our calling of election sure. Mm -hmm. There's never enough work that you can do to, to feel content, you know? You got it, bro. Hey, real quick, if I may add to you, mm -hmm. to your point, one of the main things is applying this word, man, because you can know all these scriptures, and if you you just walking around willy nilly, you don't you, you you're not applying the word. I got a quick precept. Mm -hmm. This is a Sirach chapter nineteen, verse twenty four. He that hath small understanding and feareth the Most High is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgressed of the law of the Most High. Man. So hey, you yeah, you might not be the sharpest sword in the, in the drawer, but hey, if you fear the Most High, man, you're better than somebody that knows he can quote scriptures and, and open up straight to that. Page, yeah. Yeah, you know, but he's he not applying the word. That's the main thing the Lord is looking for. Because if you fear the Lord, you're gonna apply these scriptures for sure. That's you right. Because you fear the Lord, you fear what what the, the repercussions. That's right. You know, and that's being buckled down in the spirit. Yeah. This, I got one real quick. Second um, Peter three and seventeen. It says, "Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of wickedness." Fall from your own steadfastness, man. Okay? So although you know these things, like what, what the brother said, you might know a thousand scriptures. But guess what? You also got to know that you can be led astray. You also need to know and understand that you can be tempted. And you can, it's not about being tempted, it's about falling in the temptation. Because we're all tempted of Satan. Mm -hmm. But then there are some that fall to the temptation, man. Okay, we don't want to fall to temptation, which is why we're supposed to know the Abanawa. All right, in, in Hebrew, you're supposed to know that prayer. Okay, because in, in that prayer, it tells you, you ask the Lord to lead you not into temptation, but deliver you from evil. So if you don't send these prayers up and you don't have that protective hedge around you, you can get gotten. You can be led into this, the era of wickedness and, and taken away from your steadfastness, man. All right, it, this verse 18. But grow in grace. Yeah, you want to be a graceful brother, man. Okay, when brothers around you, you know, and brothers might be visiting or you visiting other brothers, you want to be a brother of good conduct, of charity, brotherly love. You want to be a graceful spirit. You know, a brother that I like to be around that brother, man. That brother's full of the spirit. 
okay? You know, you can tell you when you're around a certain brother, like, man, that brother's full of the, the Holy Spirit. He's a graceful individual. He's a good example of what it, what it is to be a servant of the Lord. That's the type of individual you want to position yourself around. Because you feed, you're going to feed off of them. Right. You know, it says here, it says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh HaMashiach. So we, we, our mindset is to be growing towards the Lord, man. Not, not getting to a position of comfortability where you're just losing your mental awareness. You're losing your alertness. You don't, you're not considering that you're behind enemy lines no more. You worried about the finer things of life and chasing women and, and you know pleasing the flesh and pleasing your family members and things of that nature. But you you ain't priority. And that's what we were saying last night. Notice in, every, in, in any event, when Jake ain't right, the Lord is always the first one to go. You know, it's never your job. You know, I, I got a lot going on. I need to leave this job. You know, I got to, you know, Jake will get in a new relationship. Oh, I got I to gotta fall back from the camp. But you don't never think about leaving your job because right. you got a new relationship. And that's what I was going to say. One by one, they begin to make excuses. Man. Right. <laughs> you know, Jake ain't, you know, it's always the Lord is the first one to get removed out the equation. Because you allow your wickedness, the error of wickedness, lead you away from your own steadfastness, man. Mm -hmm. You want to be buckled down, man. Because when you buckled in, when you buckled into a, into a um, into a car, you acknowledging that you're going on a ride. Because mm -hmm. when the ride is over, you unbuckle the seatbelt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know you we on a spiritual journey, we on a spiritual ride. So therefore, we need to have on a spiritual seatbelt to be able to embrace, like the uh, like the brother Ash perfectly said, you want to be able to embrace with impact, man. Okay, and have consistency, be diligent, do the work. Okay, this is the time now to really truly show Yahweh Bashimah Shai that you really mean business and you love Him, you love His truth. Because it's gonna be a lot we're gonna have to go through and suffer, but guess what? It's gonna be easier for us to go through it than the people in the world. Hey, hey, you just, just use the seatbelt analogy again. Yep. You get in a car accident, your, your your collarbone might break, your ribs might break, but hey, at least you're still alive, right? Yep. Like the brother just said, hey, we're gonna have to go through these things, but hey, we have to. Acts fourteen twenty two, uh, yep. twenty four. Yeah, twenty two. Twenty two. Yep. Too much tribulation shall be attended to the kingdom. So you might come out the car busted up, broken ribs, broken mm -hmm. shoulder, glass cut you up and whatnot, but hey. You made it out to accident, so that's the point. We got to make it through. So that's why we need to be buckled down, so we can make, so we can make it through that time of persecution, all right? The because that the the, tri the true tribulation is coming, man. The hour of temptation is coming, mm -hmm. and if you're not buckled down, if you're not grounded, you're gonna get taken with the wind, man. Mm -hmm. Tossed, get tossed to and fro. That's right. It's, uh, real quick, First Peter four seventeen. It says, "For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh." And if it first began at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Abashim? So the judgment is going to begin first with us, the house cleansing, you see? And it says what? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So like you said, man, now so more than ever is the time to really be buckling down, knowing that the time is at hand. The day is approaching, which if you don't mind, can I get that scripture ball for sure? Yeah. I'm going to start up a bit. It's Hebrews 10 and 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith yep. without wavering. Because we were mentioning this yesterday on the line mm -hmm. about not being double-minded, not wavering. Like some of these other camps, you know what I'm saying? Here it is, one minute they call on the name of the Lord and one minute they don't. All right? They, they, they saying it scorns them. It says, for he <laughs> is faithful that promise. All right? It says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Because at the end of the day, the thing that the, 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 the message from the apostles on down is, is delivering is, is to provoke you into good works. It's not, it's to benefit and to profit you, not to harm you. You know, they're not going to lay a stumbling block before you. They're going to tell you nothing that's amiss. You know, it's to benefit you ultimately for you to uh, uh, obtain salvation. Uh, yep. It says, uh, this is the point, verse 25, Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, because as you mentioned also, is the time that we head into is going to require our brothers to have to come together more, you know, bring resources together, be around each other more often, sacrificing time, energy, sleep, you know, things of that nature. It's, again, it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more 
as you yeah. see that they're approaching. And this is an exhortation what we're doing, man. Because why? Because we care. We care about the sincere brothers, man. You know, the brothers that really has invested themselves in serving Yahweh Bashima Washa. We care about your service. Okay? Like in the army, man, you know, if you have an army veteran that's been around for 30 years and 40 years and he knows all the different motions that you may be going through in your service, he's gonna appreciate you if you stay down because he's gonna know what it takes to get to his level. He's like, okay, because I see this man been, you know, in this thing for like 10 years, 12 years, you know, so he's gonna give you certain pointers on how he got to be a 40 year veteran, okay? He stayed, he stayed diligent, he, he respected the service, you know? He, he wasn't one of them one of them niggas that was in the military for a charger, you know, yeah, to get a Hellcat. You know, he ain't just joined the military to get a fucking Hellcat. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I got something for you. This was me and the brother Ash was speaking about off the camera right before we started. Uh, Sirach thirty eight twenty four. It says, "The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, mm -hmm. and he that hath little business shall become wise." Yep. So in your leisure time, use it for reading, for yep. studying, man. But yeah, man. You, you gave the analogy of a skilled man with 40 years of experience, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, it came, like I said, by opportunity of leisure. You know, yep. that little business shall become wise. Wise, yeah. Yep. You know, that, that's right. I got one uh, real quick. Uh, Hebrews 12, and I'm going to start at the top. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that doth easily, it's like it, which doth so easily beset us. So the things that, that, that are pleasing to the flesh that can beset you, the scripture say, let us lay that aside, man. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it can throw, hey, man, we can be thrown off. You know, hey, some of the greatest men has, 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 has fallen, man. Look at King Solomon. He was one of the greatest kings in all the mankind that he went off. And that, that was our Lord and Savior. Came back as our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. So what more us? Yes, these temptations will try us and, and, and they will come. You know, and if you're not rooted, you can fall to these temptations, no matter how great you might think you are. Which is why we must walk in the humility. We must walk in meekness and be sober-minded. Understand these things for thyself, man. Okay? For thy own sake of thy own soul, man. Okay? It says, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. All right? Be patient in spirit, man. This is not a this is not a 40-yard dash. All right? This is a marathon. Okay, and the race is given unto the unto the uh, the patient man, the man that can endure, you know, through multiple multiple afflictions and temptations. So you have to be buckled down, man. Okay, you got to be buckled down in the spirit. Do y'all brothers have anything else? If not, we're gonna wrap it up. I got this last one. Yeah. Can end off on uh, First Peter five and eight. Oh yeah, that's perfect. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And let me get the word there, vigilant, all right, because again, this is not just, of course, some prophecies, they're taking heed to what's going on, but you need to apply this in your everyday walk, all right? Don't be walking around clueless as hell, man. Because then, hey, if you walking around clueless, anything that falls upon you, man, it can always come back to the, the ministry, man, and the body, so, Pay attention to where you put yourselves at. You're, be aware of your surroundings, you know, and avoid situations you don't need to be into. You see some shit about to pop off or it don't concern you, get, get, remove yourself from there, man. Mm -hmm. So the word for vigilant there is um, precorio, it says to watch, give strict attention to, be cautious, active. You need to actively be knowing what's going on, not only around the world, but <laughs> around your, your life, man. Your family, your kids. All right, yourself, you know, you have the grocery store, you know, pay attention, man. You know, anything, say, the devil is, is going around looking to who he can devour, man. Yeah. It's Satan to hop on our people, eat them like heathens, it don't matter, yeah. man. It's just to fuck with you, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, and you will see, if you're paying attention, being cautious, you'll see somebody start acting up. All right, I need to get away from yeah, this dude. Yeah, this dude got Satan on Right? It says to take heed lest through remission and in, indolence, which indolence means uh, uh, being senseless, mm -hmm. you know? Some destructive calamity suddenly overtake one. So mm -hmm. that's what being vigilant is, man. Being, being, looking, having foresight, man. Being prudent, 
The scriptures talk about prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth yeah. himself. So you don't want to hide yourself when the evil is already there. You're supposed to have yeah. foresight, you know? That's right. That's right. That's you got to dodge, man. So Lord willing, that was an edifying lesson, an exhortation to the, the active laborers. Uh, meeting the brothers that's, you know, got their hand to the plow, you know, doing this work. And also to you, uh, you, you, you listeners and believers, you, you know, brothers and sisters that sincerely believe in the Lord. You know, even the sisters, man, it's time to buckle down in the spirit. Because if you ain't right, man, the Lord's going to just start, the Lord's going to kill a lot of Israelites, man. Okay? So you don't want to be using this liberty to be a rebel. You know, using this liberty to despise order and government, you want to use this liberty to get right with the Lord, man. Because if you ain't showing your how about Shemal Shai that you really care about this truth and that you respect his, his words and these prophecies, the Lord is going to take you out. That's, that's, for, that's for both species, man. Okay? And we're especially the, the, the brothers that's in the truth, you know, the Lord will wipe your nose. Okay? So, Lord willing, that was edifying. We're going to go ahead and close out, giving all praises, all glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakaf, All right, double honors once more to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, many blessings to the elect. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.